So it's time for my what my sewing and growing guide for April. And as I always do, I just like to start off with taking a quick look at March. And I have actually just started heating this greenhouse. So what's the date today? It's 26th. Uh, I think I started it heating it about four or five days ago when I put the peppers in here and the tomatoes. And they're coming on quite nicely. I'm pretty pleased with the tomatoes. There's a lot of good leaf growth on these now. So now that they're starting to flower, I'm quite happy to um, let them continue to, to uh, grow actual fruits. You know, sometimes when there's not enough leaf growth, there's just not enough energy in the plants really to support fruiting. But I think there is here and I am topping and tailing the day. So at the moment, <coughs> I'm giving them about 14 hours of light of which about 12 hours is just natural daylight and just topping them up a little bit. But next month in April, I'll switch that up and I'll start providing 16 hours of light, of which again, sort of 12 to 13 is natural daylight. And uh, so the grow lights are only on for a few hours a day, basically. So in here, I'll just quickly run through what we've got. So we've got on the shelves up here, we've got all the onions. And on this side, we've got all of the salad onions. And then just got some lettuces at that end and a bit of um, tatsoi, I think. And other than that, I've got a lot of space free for all this pricking out that I'm about to do. So here I've got all of my main crop brassicas. So all of the Brussels sprouts, the kales, uh, the red cabbages, and uh, yeah, all the collets and things like that. So really look, looking forward to getting those pricked out. I've got my earliest uh, succession of courgettes here and they're coming on quite nicely. I'm quite pleased with those and those will be going in here, uh, <coughs> sort of middle, probably about the middle of April, something like that. And here I've got my next succession of tomatoes, uh, two different types of tomatoes there and my next succession, well my first succession rather, of melons again to go in here just for an early crop just the one or two melons not you know it won't be a big crop there and my next succession of the peppers which are growing quite nicely and they're inside under grow lights the other peppers are in the greenhouse now so these are the early ones and say so i've got some down here I've got some on the bench waiting for space down here and uh yeah, they're looking pretty good. And I've got a lot of potatoes obviously in here at the moment. Most of these, like all of those there, are for sort of April harvest. Uh, the next batch are for May harvest and then the June harvest are all in the polytunnel. So I'm gonna start moving some of these potatoes outside now and just protecting them under fleece. So I've got space for peppers to go in here because potatoes just need it above freezing, but peppers need it above sort of, you know, People vary in their advice basically, but somewhere above sort of 10, 11 degrees uh, is ideal for peppers. And what else have we got? Oh, we've got the, for the second succession of the cucumbers and they're looking really quite nice in here. They need potting on pretty soon into their final pots, but it's just finding space for them. They're gonna stay in the greenhouse, obviously once it starts being heated um, and I've got my first succession actually in the conservatory. And ironically, they're not quite as far on. Um, got some cabbages here and some cauliflowers. Uh, these are savoy cabbages. Actually, savoys on the allotment are doing really nice. They're sort of this sort of size now and they're uh, starting to heart up. And we've got some nice red cabbages here. And again, the red cabbages on the allotment, the early ones are doing nice. Again, they're this sort of size, not quite away from hearting up now yet, but uh, they're doing okay. Next succession of spinach. What else is of interest? Oh, we've got the first carrots of the year, germinated this year. I've got some carrots that are way further on. The ones will be harvesting in sort of late April, early May. But uh, are these looking pretty good? These are the ones, first batch to be harvested in June. Got some more down there, just waiting for those to come up. And got two more tubs on the allotment again, just waiting for those. And the strawberries are doing well. I've got a lot of strawberries on now, got a lot of flowers on. Um, but I'm pretty confident I'll have strawberries in April now. Um, 
probably about mid-April, I think, for the strawberries, and then nice sort of continuous harvest off these all the way through April and May, and then the ones in the polytunnel should be ready, uh, sort of you know, early, mid-May, something like that. And the peas are coming on quite nicely as well, so we're about up here now. Uh, these are the meteor, in good flower now, these, looking quite nice. It's nice to have some height in the greenhouse now. And these are the Oregon sugar pod, and they're not quite as far on, so they're sort of here. Meteors here, there's a month difference in the sowing dates between these two. And then the ones on the allotment are about this high, so about that high, something like that. So uh, give me a nice successional harvest of peas. And the peaches just in flower, and the apricots just finishing flowering. And I think that's it. So let's start and look at April now. And this guide I'm looking at on my iPad, it, there's a link to this down below. And I've sorted this so that it's grouped by type of veg. So I can go through all the salad onions and all the leeks and all the brassicas in groups. When you look at it in the link down below, it'll be sorted by sowing date because I think that's more useful. But in terms of me talking it through, it's easier to talk it through groups like this. And if you can hear that horrible drilling noise, I'm very sorry about that. I've got my microphone on noise cancelling, but I don't know how the extent to which it's going to block it out. Right, so start off with the salad onions. At the moment, I'm doing guardsmen. I've got loads of guardsmen up here uh, growing really nicely, not far off being planted out now. But uh, I'm going to switch over to Anita. So in previous years, for a harvest in summer and growing in summer, um, I've been using Summer Island, but I can't get a hold of that at the moment. So I switched over to Anita, which is another uh, salad onion, which is good for growing in the heat. So I'm going to grow th that all the way through um, April, May, June and July sowings. And I'll switch back to Guardsman or Ramrod or something like that for later sowings. I'm going to do my main crop leeks. I've got two batches of leeks on the go. I've got one down there, which is looking really nice. I've got this one, which is just ready to be pricked out now. Uh, so they're my summer leeks, really. So now I'm moving on to my autumn uh, and winter leeks. And I'm going to do musselburra, and I'll probably do some pavella as well, because I've got loads of those. Um, my early collets are doing quite nice. They're down there. And I just do six i think i've got six early plants just to give me a harvest in december and then i've got these plants here which uh, i'll be harvesting in sort of january february and i sometimes just do a late batch i'm never quite sure whether i'm going to need it or not uh, but i think it's always worth trying to have spares just in case something happens you know either you lose a bed to pests or another bed unexpectedly opens up and collects some of my favourite things to grow. So, you know, I'll always put, sort of be happy to pop an extra bed of collects in if I get an opportunity. And it's the same kind of thing with red cabbage. We love red cabbage, never grow enough red cabbage. So, um, again, I try to have some spares of that. And same with the breast bustle sprouts. Again, just nice to have some spares kicking around just in case we get a bit of empty space opening up. And I generally, when I'm looking at using sort of empty space, I'm generally thinking of something I can harvest in winter because we have loads of stuff. You know, we're always overwhelmed with stuff in summer and autumn. But in winter, obviously, it's a little bit more difficult to have a rich diet. So when I get space opening up in sp late spring and summer, I'm generally looking for a winter crop that I can plant. A bit more Mikado spinach. Got some Mikado spinach down here looking quite nice. Um, but... Mikado does quite well late, off, late in spring, better than most spinaches, and reportedly so does Santa Cruz. So I'm trying both of those side by side. We'll see how well they do. And my first sowing of chard. So I don't tend to do chard any earlier than this because it does tend to go to seed uh, pretty quickly if you do it early. Um, but anyway, I'll just do a rainbow chard, I think, probably. And I'll put that in the kitchen garden at the front. And two successions of sweet corn separated by two or three weeks. Um, I think the early succession, 
I'll put in these big root trainers. I'll see if I can put an image up of them. Uh, normally, I only do my um, sweet corn. I let it grow three weeks post it breaking surface. So that's a nice small plant and it doesn't need root trainers. It'll just go in, you know, one of these sort of six cell trays or something like that. Um, but if you're going to do an early succession, obviously you never know quite what the weather's going to be like. So it is better, I think, to put them in a root trainer and then you can leave them much longer. So you could leave them in there for, say, for six weeks if you needed to. So I'm coming on to the winter squash and I'm not doing a lot of different types of winter squash this year. I'm just doing Sweet Dumpling, Crown Prince and Jack Belittle. And, you know, a lot less than I normally do, but these are just the ones that have proved to be a favourite for us. Um, and I'm only doing um, Sweet Dumpling in the polytunnel because last year Debbie really liked the Sweet Dumpling harvested as small immature plant uh, squash. So rather, we'll have, have some later on for harvesting for storage. But yeah, these small immature ones should grow really well in the polytunnel. I'll keep on harvesting those all the way through and hopefully the plants will keep on kicking out little immature ones. Um, and then the, so 27th of April, so towards the end of April, uh, I'll do my main crop squash. I'm looking really to plant that out towards the end of May or early June certainly not worth rushing it with squash it's um, it's quite sensitive to the cold and although the plants will often survive they won't thrive until you've really got some heat uh, in the sun so also doing my melons and i've already got as i said my melons here for growing in this uh, greenhouse so early april i'm going to do the melons that are going to grow in the polytunnel I'm only going to do a couple of those, uh, Minnesota Midget and Champagne Watermelon are two favourites. And then I've got loads more melons that are going to be for planting in the low tunnels as they come free. Because uh, at the moment they're full of calabrese and cauliflowers, but obviously the, uh, yeah, as we go through uh, spring they'll progressively all be harvested and as beds are open up completely I'll get those melons planted out sometime again in late May or early June. Melons are quite slow growing uh, initially so uh, it's best to get them started sort of mid-April after six weeks they're about ready to plant out. Uh, next up are the courgettes that are going to go in the main beds in the polytunnel. So I've already got courgettes somewhere there, uh, which are going to go in the greenhouse. Then I've got another batch that are going to go in the polytunnel in containers. And there, you know, when you force anything, it tends to be a little bit more short lived. Uh, so the, those container oriented ones, they'll probably finish, I tend to sort of finish them sometime in July and then switch over to the ones in the main bed for harvesting in the polytunnel and then oh, so much stuff in april uh next succession of the uh oregon sugar pod uh, peas i might do some sugar snaps as well they're going to go down there in the kitchen garden and uh yeah so by then these you know will be coming to an end these early ones so next up are the french beans so I've got some cobra climbing French beans to sow. When am I going to do those? Oh, yeah, for the greenhouse, actually, in a couple of days' time. So, I'm recording this, as I said, on the 26th. So, I think on the 28th or something like that, I'm going to sow uh, my first French beans will go in here and I'll sort of go grow through the roof. Um, and then I'll do my next batch of French beans to go in containers in the polytunnel. They'll kind of go outside about July sort of time. And then just as they're kind of finishing, I'll have these uh, amethyst and Sprite uh, dwarf French beans again in the polytunnel. And then later in May, I'll do my main crop French beans to grow outside. So then there's a lot of potatoes. And well, how can I talk about these? So, Basically, just successions of potatoes. Um, I like to plant my potatoes as late as possible because then you get the biggest harvest from them. 
but not too late because then you risk late blight. So basically I'm doing a couple of more successions of shallots, of for charlottes, um, and then my main crop for storage, um, for harvesting all through autumn and early winter are going to be Sarpamira and Estima and Sarpo Una. And then I've got a late crop which are going down the side of the house on the drive, which will be the ones I'll be harvesting in late winter and early spring. I'll leave those in the pots because I find that the quality left in the pots is superior to ones that are sort of harvested and put in store. Um, but they're going to be in May, and I'll do that in another video. But the reason for that is just I've got building work going on. I can't plant them until then. So then I've got my next batch of celery. I've got a lot of celery actually in the ground at the moment. I've got some down here uh, waiting to go out. Um, but it's in the polytunnel. I'm trying to keep it frost free, although the plants are pretty big now and they'll probably be okay with a light frost. And then I've got the carrots. So I've got a lot of carrots in the ground, so in containers at the moment. I've got enough to last me until July. So these, and probably through July, to be honest, already in containers. So these that I'm sowing now, baby sugar snack and mochum, they're the ones to harvest through summer. And then I'll do two shon to harvest through autumn. I'm basically doing them pretty much at the same time. The main difference is that two shon stand in the ground really well. Uh, whereas something like mochum uh, and baby sugar snacks, they really need to be harvested within a few months, basically, of them coming to maturity. And then a lot of beetroot. So I've got a lot of beetroot already uh, growing in the polytunnel. I'll show you actually a picture of the polytunnel at the moment. I've replanted it all. So all the winter crops have fin been finished. I've replanted it all for spring. So I'm going to be harvesting it all the way through April and early well early to mid-may actually and then my um uh tomatoes cucumbers and um french beans they all go in and and the uh melons and courgettes and things they go in sort of late may so it gets completely replanted for spring then completely replanted for summer then completely replanted in autumn for uh, winter harvest so it has three complete replants every year uh, with a few sort of interplants and things like that going on as well anyway back to the beetroot because I've got loads of beetroot in the ground I can afford to start my beetroot quite late I've got two batches one will go in the back of my low tunnels that will come first and then I've got another big batch which is going to go on one of my long beds on the allotment and that'll be the storage crop and it's early for starting a storage crop, but it's a shady spot. It only gets sun, it only gets the morning sun, doesn't get any afternoon sun because it's shaded out by the climbing squash plants. Uh, so it needs a lot more time to grow, basically, is what it comes down to. Uh, so I start it early. And then first batch of golden purslane. So that is our favorite summer salad ingredient and everybody loves it and I love it. And so we're gonna grow a lot of that. Actually gonna put it just behind you there uh, in one of those beds in the kitchen garden because the grandkids like snacking on it as well. And then loads of lettuce, like all, all different varieties of lettuce sort of sown in succession. Most of those are gonna go in the kitchen garden now. Got obviously loads of lettuce on the allotment at the moment. And then finally, I think, yeah, all tomatoes so of course i've got these tomatoes here uh, which will be the ones we'll be harvesting all the way through late spring and early summer then i've got these tomatoes here which are the ones we'll be harvesting in early summer uh, and basically through to about sort of mid-august sort of time then we've got the cordons which are going in the polytunnel and start those about 4th of April, so about six weeks uh, for those to be ready. And I'm also buying some grafted ones from Dobby's, um, Aviditas and Honeycomb and Crimson Plum. And they are going to get, as I say, they're going to go in the polytunnel. And then I've got my next batch of outdoor 
hanging basket tomatoes, so like these basically, or these. Um, and they'll go outside on the patio for kind of snacking on through uh, summer. And then I will have some corn tomatoes grown up against this wall. And I'm going to do tigerella and sun gold. So tigerella, a really pretty uh, big tomato. Um, and sun gold is a fantastic one for snacking again. And I'm probably going to grow those along that wall there. So, oh, and then black moon again, another cordon tomato. Some of that, I've got some black moon here uh, to go in this greenhouse, but most of them will be outside. So, whew, that was a lot. A lot going on in April. Anyway, loads to keep track of there. So I recommend you subscribe to my newsletter. Then you get all of this drip feeded on a weekly basis. So everything that I'm sowing, everything that I'm pricking out, everything that I'm planting, everything that I'm harvesting, plus loads of hints and tips and things like that, and loads of links to video content and um, content from my ebook, uh, which kind of just gets delivered in a timely fashion. So in particular, I like to point out there are certain pests, for example, that arrive at certain times of year. April's the time for carrot fly to arrive. So is April when I'll start providing information on carrot fly um, and you know we get a lot of cutworm problems at the moment so there'll be information on cutworms and right now we've got a bit of uh, a challenge or we will soon I think have a challenge with green fly as we always do and uh, so that information all gets delivered in time and fashion so anyway my name's Steve this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon